Great photographs don't just happen. Check out your friends' Facebook pages and you'll know what I'm talking about. Photography is more like a chess game than anything else. You need to plan several moves ahead to put yourself in the right place at the right time to get the right photo. Picture in your mind the photos that you want from the event. From there, mentally backtrack your steps and have a checklist to ensure that you're prepared through every stage. First and foremost, charge your battery before every important outing and bring a spare. There's nothing worse than heading out for some shooting and the camera or your flash is dead. You'll never live that one down. Find out if you need permission to shoot. Sometimes schools and theaters and restaurants can be very picky if you look like you know what you're doing with a camera. At the Olympics, I can't even go to the cafeteria without my pass. And if I lose it, I go home. Bring the right equipment. I find for most events, I need a telephoto lens to get the action and a wide lens and a flash for the pictures of well-wishers and friends afterwards. Figure out the timing of the event. Arrive early to scope out the best location for photos. Look for positions with a clean background, an unobstructed view, and where you'll see the most action. I always look for two different types of photos. During the bulk of the event, I look for action. People doing what they're there to do. Don't feel glued to your position, however. Move around to follow the action as it develops, and towards the end of the event, get yourself in a position to get reaction photos. You know, the arms in the air, a big hug from an organizer, or that last bow to the audience. Shooting moguls at the Olympics, I hike up the hill to get into position to shoot the last jump. Usually skiers do a big flip. At the bottom of the hill, all you see is their back. By shooting from higher up on the hill, I was able to capture Alex Bilodeau at the Vancouver Olympics catching the last rays of the sun over the last jump. For his last run though, I moved to the bottom of the hill, to a position where I knew he had looked to see his score so I could get his reaction in case he won. He did, and he reacted wonderfully. Now in figure skating, I find that ice dance and single skaters look the best from ice level. Not only do you get a good look at their expressions, you also get the separation from the ice to see the height of the jumps. On a technical note, I think that almost all sports photos look better when they're shot wide open at f2.8 or f4. It cleans up the background and you can really concentrate on the athlete. For pairs, I think it looks better from above, as the photos of the girls being thrown overhead is very dramatic. You can get the two in the same frame nice and tight. At the end, you want to be in a position to see the kiss and cry area. That's where the skaters find out their scores and get the big reaction. It's really helpful to know something about the sport or your subjects involved so that you can better anticipate the action or the reaction and put yourself in the right position for success. Good luck with your own pictures and keep an eye on the Toronto Star and the Star Photo Blog to see how I make out in Sochi. For the Star.com, I'm Richard Lawton.